And I would like to ask you to join me in welcoming Steve Tucker. Steve! Gotcha. She's a little bit shorter than me. Okay, uh, I'm here to talk about Obama Doesn't Care, the bill. That's what it should be called. Yeah. They were going to call it Obama Cares, but then they didn't because he doesn't. Um, the entire legislation was built upon lies. I've been a health insurance broker for 15 years, and sitting back for the last two years looking at my industry being systematically destroyed by Barack Obama uh, has driven me insane because I know how the laws work in this country. Uh, for instance, the big impetus behind Obamacare was pre-existing conditions. Do anybody remember all the horror stories they told before Obamacare was signed about people not being able to get coverage for health insurance? Uh, they were denied by the big evil insurance companies. I have a question for you. Who do you think is responsible for pre-existing conditions? Do you think it's the insurance companies? Back in 1996, there was a piece of legislation written called HIPAA law. It was written by Congress and it has a section in it called portability. And portability says that if you have 18 months of prior health insurance coverage and you move to a new group health insurance policy, no one asks you about pre-existing conditions. So if you move from one employer to the other, as long as you've had not had a lapse of more than 63 days and you can provide a certificate of credible coverage showing you've had 18 months of prior coverage, everybody knows that law, right? Nobody ever asked you a new job. Uh, have you had the flu? <laughs> have you been sick? Do you have any medications? Why don't they ask you that? Because HIPAA law protects 90% of the American insured. They are fully protected against pre-existing conditions, but 10% are not. Because 10% of the American insured buy their health insurance policies on the individual market. And on the individual market, when you don't have a group health insurance policy, if you develop a medical condition in the first year of policy ownership, you can't get another policy if you're sick. That's a true statement. Because they will decline you because of pre-existing conditions. But the question is, whose fault is it? Do you remember what Reagan said when he said, government is not the solution, government is the problem? Who wrote HIPAA law 14 years ago? Was it the insurance industry? No, it was government. And government left out protection for 10% of the American insured. That's 14 million self-employed entrepreneurs who buy their health insurance policies on the individual market and they have no protection against pre-existing conditions. So when you hear the horror stories about people being declined for coverage, you blame government because all they had to do in this new health care legislation, we don't need 2,700 pages. All we had to do to fix pre-existing conditions is to include one sentence. And that sentence, all it had to do was read this way. All individual health insurance policies are now protected against existing HIPAA portability laws. Would that take 2,700 pages? No. Would take one sentence. Instead, we're spending $2.5 trillion for starters to protect, supposedly, and by the way, just because you have health insurance doesn't mean you're going to get care. It just means you have a health insurance policy. And we're still leaving 20 million people uninsured. So we have 50 beautiful laboratories in this country. Or in Obama land, we have 57 beautiful laboratories. But out of those 50 laboratories, there are some great ideas for the health insurance industry. For instance, let me tell you about Ohio. Oh, by the way, let me dispel the, the lie about pre-existing conditions. 35 states have high-risk health insurance pools in this country. Right here in Illinois, we have the Illinois Comprehensive Health Insurance Plan, iChip, which means that if you're sick and you have a pre-existing condition, you can go to iChip and iChip will cover you. No questions asked about pre-existing conditions. Guaranteed issue, not a group, individual. Okay? Those exist in 34 other states. Then we have 10 other states that have guaranteed issue mandates, which means that you don't even need a group. You don't have to apply for a risk pool. The insurance company has to give you guaranteed issue coverage if you're sick. Let me tell you about one of those states. One of those states is a great state where John Kasich is running for governor. Great patriot. In that state, if you apply for health insurance into one of 20 health insurance carriers, each one of them are mandated by the state 
to give you health insurance coverage regardless of your pre-existing conditions, and they are, they are mandated to do it in the state to 4% of their block of business every year. So let's say you have cancer in Ohio, right? You apply to United Healthcare. United Healthcare tells the State Department of Insurance in Ohio every 30 days, we haven't met our 4% yet, we'll take more. Next 30 days, we haven't met our 4% yet, we'll take more. So once they meet their 4% quota, and you apply to United Healthcare, they'll tell you our 4% quota has been met, please call Humana. If Humana hasn't met their 4%, or if they have, they'll give you the number to Edna, and it goes all the way down the line. And the state of Ohio has never, ever gotten close to issuing all 4% for all 20 carriers. In other words, everybody's sick gets coverage in Ohio. Now, wouldn't that be a great idea to spread that across the country? But that's not what we did. We took Obamacare's evil twin, the mini-me Romney Care, yeah. and we spread that crap all over the country. And how do we know it's going to not work? Because we're watching what's happening. We've been watching what's happening in Romney Care for the last four years. The projected cost for Romney Care was $88 million. Anybody want to take a guess what it costs today? Just throw me a number. It's $1.3 billion. Yes, sir. Exactly right. You're the same guy that was up there north. <laughs> Good job. An informed patriot. $4.3 billion. Right? They have more physicians than any other state in our union, and it's a 47-day wait to see a doctor. Imagine a rash in 47 days. Right? That's what we're having. And how do we know it's not going to work? Not only will it fiscally not work, not only will it cause rationing, which it's already causing in Massachusetts, but they have a law in Massachusetts, much like what was going to go in, Rom in Obamacare, that says that if you don't buy health insurance, you're going to be fine. Do you guys remember that? Remember when they asked Pelosi in that uncomfortable press uh, meeting where they said, hey, are you going to put people in prison if you don't buy health insurance? And she hemmed and hawed. Well, they were going to apply the same laws that apply if you don't pay your taxes, which means you can be fined and then eventually imprisoned for up to five years. But conservatives like us, there was an uproar. Tea Party groups, 912 groups, conservative Americans said, hey, you're not going to force me to buy health insurance. And if you are, I'm, I'm not going to go to prison if I don't pay the fine. So they took it out. Okay? Now let me ask you a question. 51.3 million people last year paid no taxes at all. 51.3. Many of them making up to $50,000 a year. Now if they took out the criminal penalties for you not buying health insurance, so if you ignore the 16,500 new health insurance, uh, I'm sorry, IRS agents uh, that we are going to be implementing under Obamacare, if you ignore their letter, and you don't buy health insurance, and they can't put you in prison, and there's no criminal penalties, what impetus will they have to pay the penalty? And we've been told, well, they'll hold your tax returns if you don't pay your penalty, right? How do you hold a tax return from somebody that pays no taxes? You don't. So who's really going to pay for 33 million new people's health insurance policies? We are. And your health insurance premiums are going up. We have lost five health insurance companies since Obamacare was signed into law on March 23rd. One of them is right here in Illinois. The company is called Guaranteed Trust Life. You may drive right by it down uh, on, in Glenview on Milwaukee Avenue. They sent a letter out to all my clients who are insured with Guaranteed Trust Life and hundreds and thousands of clients, okay? And the letter said that we are pulling out of the state of Illinois after decades in the business and every other state. And unlike what Obama says, where they can drop your coverage whenever you get sick, that's a federal law. It's illegal in all 50 states. That's a lie. So they have to replace it with something. So Guarantee Trust Life sent a love letter to everybody that says, oh, well, we're going to keep your coverage in place. Here's what we're going to do. You have a $2,500 deductible now? We're going to give each of you a $25,000 deductible. Now, these are people who owned a health insurance policy, paid their premiums faithfully, had very little claims. Not only are they getting a $25,000 deductible, but their insurance carrier is leaving and they're getting an 18 to 23% rate increase. It's already happening. We lost American National out of Texas. American Community Mutual just got bought up by United Healthcare. Instead of creating more competition, we are allowing the big companies to gobble up the little companies. Just like what happened in California. Because of the ridiculous mandates in California, they have about six carriers that they have to choose from. Even though we have 1,300 health insurance companies in the United States. Six carriers. So when you put the small business, the small insurance companies out of business, then the big ones will buy them up. But you got to ask yourself, why are five companies closing their doors already? Doesn't Obamacare really 